Hello everybody, this is Ross Bucher from Control My Icon, and welcome to the bracketing tutorial. In Control My Icon, we could set up bracketing in many different ways, so let's give it a try. And if you've had a chance already to watch the Using Scripts video tutorial, there's one way to do your bracketing is by writing a script uh, with a loop. You could do HDR this way if you like. But instead, let's take a look at the built-in bracketing function. And first you'll need to connect your camera, and I'm connected to a D7000. Now if we go down to Triggers, with a bracketing, when you bracket, you can bracket in any of three different ways. You can either bracket by adjusting your shutter speed, and you'll just need to make sure you're in shutter or manual mode. Or you can adjust your exposure compensation and make sure you're in aperture mode. So that will let you bracket your exposures. And you could do this to make it HDR. What happens when you do a bracket is after each shot, it transfers it back to your computer. So there can be a small delay of you know, several seconds. Now this is unlike some cameras that have built-in HDR functionality, and it will capture the image very quickly. The advantage of having it in camera is that very little movement can occur in a composition while the images are being captured. So that's kind of the disadvantage to using the bracketing window here. But if you have a relatively static scene where things aren't moving very much, and this is a, a good way to go about doing an HDR bracket. Now there's another function here, and that is doing aperture bracketing. And you can do that while being in aperture or manual mode. Now this is a very unusual style of bracketing, but it allows you to capture a series of images with varying aperture. And then you could pick whichever one looks best. We're going to try doing an HDR, and this HDR is just going to have three shots. And uh, currently I have the camera in aperture mode, so we'll do an adjust exposure compensation method. And I want to take a shot, first of all, at minus two, and you can just double click on it. If you want to get deleted, you just do this double click on it or double click on it here delete okay so at minus two exposure compensation then I want to do one with no exposure compensation and then I want to do one at plus two exposure compensation now you can do as many as you like here so you can have well in this case you know um, a, almost a 20 step HDR which probably is not practical but you could do it if you wanted to so some cameras are very limited into how many steps that you could do an HDR with its built-in functionality, and this lets you bypass that. Now you can rearrange these if you like. If I wanted to go plus two first, I go up, and move on. So that's just the opposite. But uh, I'll return it back to how I had it. Now whenever you're ready to start, you just press the start button, and the settings it's going to use are whatever you currently have set up here. So it's going to use this aperture, this compensation, and then it's going to take the first one at minus two, then it's going to go zero, and then plus two, it's going to use this ISO and white balance, it's going to use all these settings and store your images here. The images will be stored under this folder, and I'm just going to bring over the help to show you where it stores it in that folder. Every time you start a bracketing sequence, it creates a new subfolder here. So it'll be C colon backslash images slash, and then it'll say bracket underscore, and then your month, date, hour, minute, second. So every set of bracketed images will have its own subfolder. And currently, I have it using at date time one, but if you wanted to, you can go at session counter one. And this will ensure that the first image you capture in this bracketing sequence has the number zero. This way you can ensure that the first image captured will have a name of 0.jpg or .nef or whatever file format you select. And then the next one will be one dot, and then two dot, and then three dot, and so on. And then every time you start the bracketing sequence again, it restarts back to zero. This is a very easy way to keep your numbering straight. A lot of HDR software that you may use to process these require that your images are in a particular order, and it may try to determine the order based on the date and time of the image or the file names. And so this way, by using session counter one, you have the option to use file names. So let's give this a try. I'm just going to hit start, 
And we have a progress bar, so it took the first image, second image, third image. And here is the folder that is, contains my images. It has a bracket underscore with a stamp, and here it has our captured images. So if I look closely at these, this one is fairly dark, this one's a bit lighter, this one's lighter yet. So three images ready for HDR processing. Okay, let's try another. This time, let's say I wanted to adjust my shutter speed. So I'll click here, and on the camera, I'm going to select manual mode. And now here I have my shutter speeds. So let's say I wanted to go 110, 120, 130, 160, 125, 50, and let's get a whole variety here. So you can put them in whatever order you like, however many you like, and let's just start it. And we'll look at the files coming in. So it doesn't take too long to run that, and you can see as the shutter speed gets faster, the pictures, of course, get darker. So there's another set of images ready for HDR processing. And the other one I mentioned is aperture bracketing, and if you have a chance, give that one a try. It's the same kind of idea, except you're just going to receive a set of images with varying aperture. Now, something that you can do with the bracketing is you can chain it with the intervalometer. The intervalometer allows you to do time-lapse photography, and so whenever it captures an image, it could capture just one image, or you could tell it to run a bracketing sequence. So you could do an HDR time-lapse sequence. If you check out the intervalometer video tutorial, we'll look at how you could chain these two together. And that's it. That's how you do bracketing in Control My Nikon. Happy tethering.